Hello everybody, welcome back to the Saskatoon Berry Bush out front where we're going to start today's wander around the property. It is Sunday so that means we are going to do our best to look at everything growing on around here, weather permitting, and uh, well, just a couple of projects and ideas as well. You know me, I like to keep it a little bit random. So, let's get started on these uh, railroad Thai chili peppers. Starting with the El Oro de Ecuador up front. A couple of you fine folks suggested that might just be a little bit of sun scald going on there. And I should not worry about it, they will ripen up just fine. So therefore I am going to do my best to follow that advice. Try not to worry about it. Doesn't seem to be anything going on as far as like mushiness or the peppers don't seem to be suffering. So yeah, so far this is an amazing plant for me. Yahia Huchapan. Got some definite upward growth going on here. Just the last little bit. Whole lot of peppers still on the front here. Kind of got some green, kind of got some yellow. Would really like to see these go that orange that the ones that started to dry up and die did. Would like to try it as a proper fresh ripe pepper, you know? Ahi Calabaza. Got some interesting things going on on a couple of these pods as well. Like that, that almost looks like somebody burnt it with a little bit of metal or something. I don't know. Oh, well, I have to be a little more careful with these ones. What is that? Oh, that can't be good. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, I guess that's today's question. Anybody know what's going on with this poor ahi calabaza pepper pod? Does not look happy. Might be time to throw some additional nutrients into that soil. We shall see. And of course the sand dollar. The mighty sand dollar. Quite a few of these flowers starting to look a little more productive. Potentially, anyway. You know me, I'm always looking forward with those... What was it my mother used to call them? Rose-tinted glasses. See everything in the best possible outcomes. Here we've got the yellow scorpion. I would never have seen this though. Still trying to put on this little tiny flower ball down there. You see that thing? It's cute. It's got another one forming up there. Somehow, it's still alive. Gave it a little bit of water. We'll see what it does. It's been kind of a medium cloudy day so far, so you can actually see these things in their glory and or misery depending on if you're looking at a shard or a kale or a cabbage but brought the clippers out because I'm going to harvest a couple of these bad boys let them sun dry they're going to become part of my fish food situation previous goldfish have eaten shard so therefore these ones will too whether they want to or not eventually they'll eat it because it's what they got yeah, let me cut down a couple of these. The ones on this pink shard are easily the best examples. I mean, okay, there's my hand spread out. And that's like an octave on a piano, for those of you who know. So we got one. It's like, that's a big leaf. We're gonna cut that puppy off. Out of all the shard plants out front, this isn't necessarily the largest one, but this is the one that amazes me the most. It went outside, it froze, it looked like it froze to death. And then a couple weeks after pronounced dead, there's a little spurt of growth came up the middle and now this thing is a very dense, nice little salad sized leaf. It's a great little shard. I'm quite happy it's uh, decided to stick around. But yeah, this turned out to be a really good idea. And I, you know, you step back from it I kind of like that look. Looks better than the overgrown lawn anyway. Let me side that up here. Oh, oh, oh. Look at this beautiful, beautiful matchbox pepper. There are peppers everywhere. <clears throat> that is incredible. Not sure what color to wait for on this. I'm told the Matchbox is a stabilized variety of the Super Chili, so I'm guessing, you know, I'm waiting for a red. But we shall see. Got the Paper Lantern Habanero here. 
few flowers on there. A couple little peppers on here. I think we found a larger pepper last week. I don't shadow in the way here, but... Oh, yes, we did. Do you see that beauty? That is uh, larger than the yellow scorpion plant that's trying to produce peppers. That's a nice looking. Oh, there's another one in the back. Sure enough. So I was advised this takes a while to set in, but once it does, it uh, explodes. That seems to be a very accurate statement. The red demon out front here. This one is still growing true to form for the red demons. Very skinny, kind of pointy, like a sharp almost kind of pepper. Prison shank pepper. But, nicely productive. We can see there are quite a few on here. Little tiny ones up here, flowers still forming. I do like a plant that continues to produce flowers and fruit all throughout the season as compared to your more determinate varieties. It's kind of what the tomato project is about this year is determining the determinates and uh, which ones I want to keep and carry on growing, you know? But yeah, that, that red demon pepper is doing amazing. I still haven't moved this zucchini plant. I'm thinking it's just gonna, it's just gonna sit it out here. It's gonna ride it out. We'll see what it does and hope for the best. You know me, but this thing hasn't died yet. The end of it's clearly not growing, but this part of it here is still filling out. That's quite interesting. We've got one forming there, even though it's looking kind of haggard. We've got a fresh one coming up here. Some dead ones down there. Should take a moment while I've got the snips out here. Clean this up a little bit. Well, I would say that's a couple of moments well spent. This looks like a much happier plant, even though we know it's not. It still looks like it is. For many gardeners, that's what really matters. I, on the other hand, would like to see some production out of this, so let's get with the program little zucchini. I'm pretty sure these hanging planter tomatoes are beyond repair. Really don't see a whole lot of positive growth going on there. There's a little bit, maybe suggest something, but yeah. Now we have discussed, kind of toyed with the idea of maybe planting these into something larger and seeing if that helps them live for the rest of the season. There are a few places that come to mind. One of them is this John Deere crate that we've got here. Um, Shocks put some dill in there, that's really cool. I'm hoping that takes in. But I mean, for now, like not long term, but for now, I could potentially plant those tomatoes in this other corner here and we'll see if uh, that really helps them. I don't know, they kind of look beyond repair to me, but at the same time, I don't ever like to really give up on anything until it's, well, until I'm, I know I'm beating a dead horse, really. Here is our newest swale sort of hoogle raised bed thingy. I need to come up with some sort of silly, clever name for this because, I don't know, trying to define it isn't necessarily working for me. But we can see that these tomatoes seem to be getting bigger and stronger every day. The beans along the back seem to be developing nicely. And unless I miss my bet, I do believe we finally have a pea sprouting up in the front of this. Near as I can tell at the moment, that's the only one, but whatever. Anything that ties some roots up in here and helps create future drainage and uh, root growth, and there's a lot of things that I'm kind of hoping for with those roots, so yes, yes. We'll just ride it out and see what happens. These little tomato plants are so cute, though, and they got little tomatoes on them. So that is impressive. I believe these two on the end are the same variety that uh, I have growing in the hangar. So these will be absolutely delicious. Whereas these ones in the middle are a completely different cherry tomato that the name of escapes me at the moment. But, they're branching out. Even this one here has got some flowers setting on it. Got some fruit setting on this one. Got this adorable little cluster here. Right, how cute is that? One beside it, <laughs> we'll take a closer look. It's, it's doing its best to produce a couple of clusters. Well, we'll see. You know, if any of these actually get ripe, I will uh, save their seeds, because clearly, 
heavily abused, still prepared to produce. That's the kind of tomato I need to be growing. Looking at Troll's garden here, we see some of the, uh, dare I say it, currently unhappiest tomatoes on the property. I can't seem to keep enough moisture into these guys right now while we're in a hot spell. And I'm just not, not terribly keen on being out here watering them a couple times a day. My only real option, I think, with these is to, uh, well, basically take over full-time use of the ice fishing sled as a water basin. Kind of leave them in that. Taking a look into this one pear, red pear variety, does seem to be doing its best to produce nice numbers of clusters and nice numbers in those clusters. So it's worth it. I just don't like tying up the sled. I believe this one here is the Manitoba variety. Kind of looks like we might be starting to get some color on these. That would be nice. Quite a few tomatoes on here. Definitely not uh, the nicest tomatoes in the yard, but a lot on there. I did actually end up cutting a little bit out of this sage. But holy, look at that thing grow. And the rosemary, I swear this doubles in size like every week. See how far down that goes? This is fantastic. Thinking about using some of, the, some of that uh, rooting powder and cloning some of this and some of these because both of these are kind of a pain to try and grow from seed. So if I can get some rooted cuttings, I think I'd be a much happier bear there. Look at the flower development on this dark opal basil. Lots of what looks to me to be spent flowers. Fantastic. I can collect some of the seeds from that, that'll be great. If they start growing wild here, also great. It's a win either way, isn't it? Nepalese bell, this poor, long suffering plant. Nice leaf growth lately, but I'm not seeing any flower starts in there. The coffee can sugar rush cream. It was suggested to me this might be some form of blossom enderot. I think I'm going to take these ones off and let the plant focus on uh, hopefully healthier fruit. It's pretty much time to give up and retire these two along the back. Not thrilled about that, but that's, that's life in the garden. And the ahi lemon drop appears to be trucking along. Has put on several little flowers. So hopefully I'll get to try that. That would be fantastic. Here we have the mouse melon, the cucumber melons. These things, I love these. Here you go. Lego watermelons, right? Adorable, just tiny little things. And once these plants get to putting fruit on, they are very, very productive. Plus, listen to this. You hear that crunch? These things are fabulous. And your kids get to say they ate a whole cucumber bragging rights alone. Anything that gets a meat and veggies though, right? We just took a look at the pepper patch back on Friday. So I'm not gonna look too deeply into this, but we do have some very nice looking pods on this particular sugar rush. I think this is the peach. Hopefully we'll see some proper ripening on there. And I have started kind of an experiment up here. What a surprise. I was cleaning out the fire pit and I've decided to throw some charcoal around the base of a few of these peppers. I'm hoping uh, thermal mass, right? And it's dark, so it should absorb, trap that sunlight, release it over the night. Hopefully, I can get better pepper production. <laughs> I don't know, kinda looks nice though. Here we see the radish and thistle bed. Oh, these thistle flowers. They are so pretty though. Anyway, the point I wanted to show you here was that the radishes have started going to seed. I pulled a pod about this size off earlier, busted it open. Looked like it was trying to form six or seven seeds in there. So I think, whereas I was going to mow it down, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to let it grow out. And I'm going to try and harvest some of these radish seeds and we'll see if next year or maybe even over the winter I can grow something from these. We know the basement is just that little bit warmer in the winter time so 
perhaps, if nothing else, I can grow radishes. We shall see. The carrot bed is coming along quite nicely. Definitely looks much better with the uh, lawn clipping mulch in there. Thinking of places where I'm trying the mulch, we've got the corn bed here. And this is where I initially started throwing down the charcoal because I want to cover up those roots. And, well, I thought it would look nice. I have to say, I still think it does. This tomato shows up much better. Still looking forward to some fruit on there, but it looks like there is the first one. You can kind of tell because they really split open. Start showing you the star that is the green petals on there. Excellent, excellent. We've been having a grand time harvesting peas from these random ones here. All sorts of sizes. This one here I think I'll leave on for a couple more days. Found a few that were surprisingly large though. It seems like every day there's new peas to be found on there, so that's great. Looking at the bunker tomatoes. Oh, oh. That's some nice looking mater size going on there. Some nice looking maters there too. Yeah, I think this is definitely my long term plan for how I'm going to grow tomatoes out here in the Manitoba climate because built in with the sod like this, it seems to really retain the moisture that goes into it. Filled in with the lawn clippings like it is, it seems to hold a lot of moisture and slowly release it to the plants when they need it and these are the nicest tomato plants I have ever grown. Taking a peek at the leftover bed here really quickly looks like the cucumber is finally recovering from its vicious um, we'll call it an industrial accident <coughs> with the riding mower and kind of nipped the growing tip off of it and it uh, was sulking for a couple weeks. There's that black zucchini I wouldn't say it's black, but it's definitely a very dark green. Got some good size to it. Shocks was saying something about zucchini boats, so I think that'll be coming in soon. Maybe another inch or two. She said it needs to be plate size, so... I'm a hungry bear. I use the big plates. Back in the wild patch here, we can see the dandelions are still doing incredibly well, which is fantastic since the fish have grown quite fond of dried dandelion leaves. Makes my life a little bit cheaper. They do seem to be growing in rows. Got to come through here with the clippers and get rid of these things, though. I was kind of hoping to uh, dump them in the biogas digester. Never see these burrs again, but maybe next year. <laughs> we do have this one burgundy bush bean. It has survived all of the abuse of growing amongst the weeds and such here. Lovely color to the flowers there. Hopefully we'll see some beans. Looking back deep into the heart of the mess. We can see, I believe these are yellow beans that we're looking for. And little tiny yellow beans that we have. So even though these are so completely crowded out by everything here, they have managed to grab enough sunlight that they are ahead of the burgundy in production. That's kind of interesting. Speaking of production, this tomato grove, I guess, is the most consistent thing I'm calling it, is just blowing me away with how well this is doing. I uh, honestly believe that because those trees block so much morning light, wouldn't be able to produce anywhere near this well. But we can see that isn't really the case. What we can also see that is not the case is these stakes are really, really not working out for me. So I think over the coming week, I'm going to explore a little project, sort of a three-stick teepee idea. I may make a video about that. You may just see the end result. You know how it goes on this channel. So we kind of fast-forwarded through the grove to get to the unpronounceable tomato here because after much waiting, we finally have the very beginning of a tomato in there. I'm hoping it will stay, hoping it will have friends, but let's all bow our heads for a moment of silence and hope for that tomato.
I am quite pleased with how well these pear varieties seem to be doing. Pretty much everywhere I've got a pear planted there. They're pearly productive. Be quite curious to see what that would do in one of the bunker gardens. Over here, we've got, <laughs> these are our sweet Juliet hybrid tomatoes. There's a, a long story that amuses the heck out of me, but we'll skip it today. But anyway, it's a very, very nice paste tomato. Grows in a good solid cluster, if you could see it. So yeah, not a lot of the uh, slimy gel in the middle of these. These, a short version of the story, these are the tomatoes that kind of converted me to tomatoes in general and that there could be some of them that I liked because before I tried these I kind of was four square against tomatoes. Shocks had been tricking me with some tomatoes which is a whole other fascinating story but uh, ultimately it boils down to I like the meat, I like the flesh of a tomato. Hello, little bee. So before we go, of course, the obligatory look at the indigo rose tomatoes. Shox was kind enough to donate this from her fairy garden since it was no longer required. I'm very, very happy to have those up off the ground. This is kind of what inspired my thinking on the little teepee pole project for the coming week. So yeah, we'll see. That it, it, Sillient right now. Could be silly, could be brilliant. Only time will tell. And yeah, here's the home hardware lemon boy. You've got a lot of plants to make up for, boy. Oh boy, oh boy, you better be productive. So I think that's a wrap for garden-related stuff today. I did want to show you kind of really quickly, for those of you who are interested anyway, um, kind of the fertilizer that's coming out of my little biogas project so far. I technically fed and started this thing on Wednesday. So it's um, far from a mature culture in there. But... Just look at the stuff that's coming out of this. Topping it up with some water here at the moment. But, you see the color of that coming out of there? All right. To me, that's that's got a hint of water with stuff in it, you know? Just a hint. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. The smell that's currently associated with uh, the water coming out of this is pretty rank right now but it's still trying to use up its uh, stores of oxygen so in theory that will change this will calm down but before my battery dies I wanted to show you that is what I'm mixing now when I water a few of the plants around the garden that is close to a 10 to 1 ratio as I can get it and it seems to be working all right, well, the battery on this old camera has given me some grief, but then again, the digital uh, scan disc card, whatever, the little camera cards, was giving me grief earlier when I started it up, too, so I shouldn't be too surprised. With any luck, however, it will transfer to the computer and therefore <laughs> end up on YouTube. We don't want a repeat of, what, two weeks ago? I don't, I don't need that. I don't need that. You don't want that. Let's hope it doesn't come to that. All right, hopefully, I will see you guys again on Tuesday.